<laughs> we are back. We are back. Day in the life with the track cars, supercars. And I know it's been a while. We've been traveling across the whole country. Just picked up the all new Ford Raptor R. Uh, so much fun. It really was. But I've been missing the track cars, the race cars. And the last time I drove the Corvette Z06, <laughs> get ready for it, was back when I was in Texas at Circuit of the Americas. It's been that long. It's been basically one full month since I've driven the Z06. Obviously, I drove it here to wherever I'm right now, but that is the purpose of today's video. It is time for the track day aftermath because, as you know, when you do a lot of track days and functions driving your car hard, you have to get a synopsis. You gotta return back from the event, go around the car, and find out, well, where are we now? At this stage, I would say this is the most raced, hardest driven Z06 on the planet, other than development cars, right? We have uh, taken it to, uh, let's see how many tracks now. We've been to Big Willow. We've been to Chuckwalla Raceway. We have been to Coda, Circuit of the Americas, right? We have been to Auto Club Speedway. The only other tracks on the agenda we haven't gone to yet, which we will, is going to be my favorite. Laguna Seca Raceway. Wait, 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 wait a second. I have been on Laguna Seca Raceway in the Z06. We were the first ride along. Me and Ron Fellows went out for a few laps on Laguna Seca Raceway. It was his first time driving the Z06 and that video blew up. It was the first look at what the car can do on the racetrack and I am happy to say that we have been living up to the expectations. Now, Obviously, it may seem like I'm the biggest fanboy in the world, right? That's what it looks like. I'm not trying to appease anybody. I am specifically talking about my ownership experiences. Yeah, I can say a lot of good things about the car. I'm not being paid to say good things. I think for all of you, it is good to know the bad, the ugly, the amazing, and the okay, right? That is what we're gonna do today because I have to break down what it's been like after tons and tons and tons of days at the racetrack, driving hard and putting down record laps. Cause hey, that's what we're good at, right? It's too hot, Jack is coming off. All right, so I have moved the vehicle a bit more to the left so you can see it in the sunlight. Now all these rubber marks, yeah, much more visible now, right? They come off very easily. In summary, most of the pieces of rubber that hit the Z06, it's very similar to that of the standard Stingray. All around, you'll find the same exact impact points. I would really recommend protecting it because all this exposed carbon fiber is not cheap. I think from a base model Z06 to the Z07 we have with all the carbon, you're looking at upwards of like $60,000 in options. That is a lot. It is definitely getting into the supercar tier of prices for sure. I mean, out the door, this costs the same as like a 992 GT3. And from my experience, especially on the racetrack, I am beating the lap times that those vehicles are putting down stock for stock. Overall, there isn't going to be, I don't think, another naturally aspirated V8 supercar to come out that will offer you what this car offers you. Other main impact points for rubber, let me just give you a quick rundown. Uh, moving to the left, the doors are pretty uh, safe, it seems, but the mirrors get a pretty uh, hit. So here's another piece of rubber that hit the side mirror, and then two more on either side. So PPF this, I do have this paint protected as well. Coming to the side, uh, the intakes look pretty fine on the inside, but coming down here, one problem the Stingray always had was that the side rear haunches would be uh, peltered by a rubber and like rocks and debris. It looks like the Z06 is dealing with the same exact thing with the wide body kit. The beauty of it all is that you can show off to all your friends how much track rubber you actually get uh, hit with all the time on the racetrack. You really show off how you're using your Z06 properly, right? I actually thought with this new carbon fiber side skirt, it would help with the impact zones, but it seems like uh, for the door, it looks good. But yeah, we still have the same issue the Stingray dealt with. Versus the Stingray, actually, I'm not getting any issues with uh, rubber or any impacts on the carbon fiber spoiler. It's higher up and as you can see, flawless. Absolutely nothing on it. Luckily, I have this protected as well. I recommend covering as much as you can on the Z06. It's an expensive car. Overall then, as you can see visually, the Z06 is holding up great. How about all the mechanical bits. Well, if we come back to the front of the car, 
Unfortunately, even driving on the street, the radiators, as you can see here, will get uh, hit by rocks or other pieces of debris on the road. Even pieces of tires can end up bending some of these little fins. Okay, so truth be told, I do think it's unfortunate Chevy couldn't engineer a solution for that. The 720S has a solution where those uh, front radiators are kind of recessed behind a uh, front fascia arrow. That's, that's a great engineering solution. This vehicle obviously doesn't have that. They're just right up there in your face. And if they're in our face, they're in the face of uh, rear tires that are in front of you with the car driving on the racetrack. You can understand how it is an impact zone. Believe it or not, it doesn't look very bad to me. I've seen uh, very, very bad front radiators with uh, people's cars, and luckily, I'm taking very good care of this. Okay, we've gone over all the visual points that uh, you see the aftermath of a track day with. What about all the other parts of the car, such as the tires and the mechanical bits that are actually uh, being used with pressure and force to affect how this car moves. Let's kick off with the tires. We're on my uh, fourth set, I believe, of Cup 2Rs. That means that we're, no, $10,000 in? $10,000 in with tires so far on the Z06? Let, let me, let, let's go over this. For this task, let me go ahead and turn the tire. I'll go to the right because that is where the sun is. So starting up the Z. There we go. Off. As you can see here, the tire is really, really peeling off all around the center of it. I do think I could drive it a little bit more. The problem is the wear indicators are dead. Like this center, actually, is that dead? It looks pretty much dead. I don't think there is very much of anything left in these tires. For the average owner, I don't think they'll be going through tires fast at all. As with any vehicle, especially if you're uh, chasing lap times, you will go through tires fast. I do think I am going through these Cup 2Rs faster than any other set of tires I've ever owned. At the same time, they're offering more grip than any other set of tires I own. And then at the same time, <laughs> they are the most expensive set of tires I've ever owned. Each set is $2,600, something like that. Every two tire changes, you're looking at $5,000. If I compare that to my McLaren, the McLaren is uh, way more cheap to run than this car. I'm just gonna be honest here, it is. I can run the McLaren for literally probably half the price it cost me to run the Z06. The reason why, it weighs 2,980 pounds with a tank of gas. Uh, that super lightweight platform that it functions with allows for better tire management because the tires aren't as wide and you don't go through them as much. Given that they're not as wide, they don't cost as much, you can see how the story progresses. So believe it or not, the more expensive car, the 600 LT, is cheaper to run by a long shot. A uh, set of tires for me for the 600 LT costs less than two thousand dollars what was it eighteen hundred i believe for my last tire change let's just leave it there and if you work on a mclaren they're not expensive to own the service is actually not that much more expensive than regular chevrolet dealership service too anyways those points were not rips by any means it's just sharing truthful feedback right back to you uh looking at the driver's side it did a pretty good job for the sessions that we did at Coda. We were running it really hard. The beauty of Coda is that it's just a very smooth track, and to me it's smooth um, compared to the California tracks, and this is wearing a lot better than all of my time at any California track, and I think Laguna Seca will be the same story. So I think, look at the driver's side now, I am happy with this wear. Definitely, we don't have hot laps in these tires. Uh, performance, I think right now I have about a three second drop off. Uh, and I really did notice that at the track because my uh, second day sessions were getting slower and slower, even though I was getting faster and more, let's say, uh, perfect, flawless with each lap as a driver. Let's see how the rears, how did the rears hold up? Let me uh, dial in settings. Alrighty, can you see now? So let's zoom in 
uh, it looks like the rear tire wear is really good. There isn't as much of a concern with the rears because you're not putting in steering effort. Having a bigger, wider contact patch means it's relying more on the tire surface and you have more of it. So I think that the cooling factor with these tires, uh, how wide they are, the engineering, it doesn't seem like you'll obliterate through the rears as fast as the fronts by any margin. Alrighty, let's check out the other side. Let's see what this rear is all about. So boosting all up. All right, here we go. This is a driver's side rear tire. Driver's side rear looks pretty good too. I think I have some miles left on these tires. It's not completely flat. With my Cup 2s back in the day and the GT350, ooh, I would go through them so fast. It would be flat on the outer side. With the negative two and a half degrees of camber, it's running actually very very nicely we are almost done don't worry finally that leads me to the engine and yeah everyone online saying that this car is blowing up or you're seeing them blow up from deliveries i'm not saying that they haven't happened i just don't think there is one slightest uh, let's say a drop of concern you should have because we are showing the world how this is a racing motor You turn it on it feels like a 458 special uh, And I also see have seen comments saying that the 458 is better than this car. I don't think so I think this is Probably the greatest natural aspirated V8 that we've ever really seen even Christian von Koenigsegg was impressed with this V8 if I recall uh, from a news story during a car week of last year. No uh, oil consumption issues, no heat issues, the cooling, fantastic. Seems like the Z06 has the makings of the C8R race car, right? The body kit, the structural rigidity with the new chassis, uh, the tires are the widest for a track car you'll find on the market, the stickiest for a track car, you have the arrow, it's all holding up like a track car. That's the beauty of it. You can daily drive this to cars and coffee. Like, um, I don't want to say any examples, actually. I don't want to uh, uh, hurt anyone's feelings. You can baby it to cars and coffee all you want, for sure. I've been saying a lot of good things, haven't I, so far, about the Z06 or this whole video, about the way how it's holding up as a race car. There's one thing that I'm worried about. Uh, we're looking at the end of the life of the brake pads for the Z06, and I priced everything out for this car. The rotors in combination with the brake pads, you're looking at $20,000. That's a lot of money, isn't it? I gotta start looking up online and trying to find out um, how to get a great um, price for new brakes on this car. I do think they are amazing brakes. They stop very fast. Here's the final issue I'm facing with the Z06. No, it's not working, my front left tire sensor. Whoa, no way, the tire sensor gauge came back. Never mind, we're good. If I go left, the car goes straight. If I go straight, the car goes right. Look at that. See that, it's turning right. When I go a bit to the left, like one or two degrees, I think one, yeah, one or two degrees, the car will go straight. So that is unfortunate. I think um, one of the tires or wheels got knocked out of alignment from the apexes at the track. I'm not sure what what could have happened, uh, which it's a bummer because I got to get that figured out now next. We are getting the uh, brake squeal, finally. Let's see if we can hear it. Ready? It's more like a grinding sound. Other than that, I've uh, been a great track car. Could not be any happier with what we have done so far and the way the car has come together. Uh, in general, please let me know what do you think of how the vehicle has lasted to all these non-stop track day events. Coda is a harsh track on a car. It is. And we're coming out basically flawless. The you know, wheel alignment got knocked out a little bit. whoop de doo That's not a big deal. We'll just fix it, right? Uh, it's, it's not like the suspension's broken, right? Let me call in Get that figured out. Let's weigh these brakes. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button or help me out and subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.